It is the year 102 BC. The Germanic horde of Teutones and Ambrones, numbering in the quarter of the millions, breaks through the Duras River in Gaul, modern France, and enter into the Rhone Valley. The Germanic horde spreads for miles, being made roughly up of 130,000 warriors, as well as wagons, carts, horses, and women and children. Although the Teutones made up a majority of this force, the Ambrones also contribute around 30,000 warriors themselves. The size of the horde, however, means that progress is slow, giving Marius, the Roman general in charge of repelling the Ambrones and Teutones, time to prepare for the upcoming battle. In the time it takes the Germans to reach Marius, Marius has constructed a heavily fortified camp next to a river provisioned with supplies. The Germans attempt to get the Romans to come out of the camp by shouting insults and issuing challenges, all of which were refused by Marius. Marius simply did not want to give up a highly defensible position for an uncertain outcome. Eventually, one of the Germans got so fed up of waiting for the Romans to come out of their camp that he issued a challenge directly to Marius. Marius refused, saying that if the barbarian desired death so much, he should kill himself. The German continued to issue his challenge to Marius. Marius therefore brought forth a veteran gladiator and yelled to the German that it was beneath him to fight such a lowly barbarian so he can fight a slave instead. Frustrated by the lack of progress, the Germans attacked the fort. Over the course of three days, the Germans attempt to storm the camp. However, wave after wave failed with the Roman defences holding strong. Still, the Romans did not leave their fortifications frustrating the Germans, who decided to give up on the futile attempt to take the fort and headed south towards the Greek city of Massilla. Marius would wait for the entire Germanic horde to pass by, which took several days. Once the Germans were clear from the area, Marius finally left the camp, dodging and staying out of sight of the Germans, waiting for the prime opportunity to strike. When he did come into sight of the Germans, Marius would order his men to construct another camp. After all the losses the Germans had sustained from their previous failed assaults on Marius's camp, they did not fancy the idea of trying again. This continued for several days until Marius and the Germans arrived along the coasts of the river Aquae Sextiae. It was here that one of the most decisive battles of the Cimbrian Wars would be fought and it was here that Marius would test if the faith the Roman Senate had in his ability to command the Roman army would be put to the test. Thanks for watching and listening to our video. If you like the channel, consider subscribing to Ancient History Guy. Or, if you really like the channel, head on over to our Patreon feed. There, for as little as $1 a month, you can gain access to exclusive documentaries, behind the scene footage, and videos before they're live on YouTube. All sources are listed and linked in the description below. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I've been the Ancient History Guy, and as always, I'll be seeing you later.